Hello, dear viewers, and welcome to a new episode of Business Insider. Tonight, we'll be talking about herbal plants in Egypt, uh, the uh, current business situation for herbal plants and the future plans for herbal uh, uh, plants. Uh, uh, we'll also be talking about the global figures, the main players, and again, the situation specifically in Egypt and the future plans to develop uh, this uh, very important uh, uh, industry. And we have uh, with us um, here in the studio an expert uh, in this field, a holder of a PhD uh, in the field from Japan. He is Dr. Amr Hilal, and he's a, a former um, staff member uh, of uh, the Faculty of Pharmacy, uh, Cairo University, and he's also a member of the National uh, Drug Committee. A very good evening to you, Dr. Hilal. Good Thank evening, you for joining us. For you and for your viewers. Thank you, Dr. Hilal. Allow us, please, as always, in this program, we first watch a report on our main topic please. for tonight, and then we'll come back and start our discussion. Dear viewers, you. please stay with us. Ancient Egyptians were the first in the world to invent the extraction of flower essences and they are credited as some of the first perfumers in history. Egyptians were the first civilization to incorporate perfume into their culture. The roots of the aromatherapy lie in ancient civilizations, particularly that of Egypt. The goal of aromatherapy is to provide holistic therapy in such a manner that the body cannot be separated from the mind, soul, our spirit. Ancient Egyptians were masters of the holistic and believed that beauty, magic and medicine were inseparable. They recognized body care and beauty to start with cleanliness. Unpleasant smells were associated with impurity and good smells indicated the presence of the sacred. In no other country or culture was the concern with body care and beautification so extensive and it even transcended economic status. In modern Egypt it became an important part of the economy. In 2022, Egypt exported $62.7 million in essential oils, making it the 19th largest exporter of essential oils in the world. At the same year, essential oils was the 132nd most exported product in Egypt. The main destination of essential oils exports from Egypt are France, the United States, Germany, the United Kingdom, and India. The fastest growing export export markets for essential oils of Egypt between 2021 and 2022 were India, Germany and Switzerland. All right, thank you very much, uh, dear viewers, for staying with us and many thanks to Abir Hussein and Rasha Abdel Hamid. Uh, uh, for this report and we're back here in the studio with our dear guest Dr. Amr Hilal, uh, the uh, former uh, um, member uh, uh, of the uh, staff member of the Faculty of Pharmacy uh, Cairo University and the member of the National Drug Committee. Now Dr. Hilal, Herbert Plant's uh, uh, business is a very big uh, business uh, globally. We want to know about the global figures, about the global situation, and of course we want to know about our situation here concerning this very important industry uh, yes. um, of herbal plants uh, in Egypt. Let us uh, just to make it easier for our viewers. We are talking about herbal plants. Herbal plants can be produced and exported as a crude form. This is the minimum advantage of it. And the big players are uh, China and India. We are talking about a global market of about 13 billion. And Egypt is exporting by about 169 million. We're talking about dollars here. Dollars, billion yes, dollars. Yes, right. yes, we are yes. good. And we are ranked number four. Mm -hmm. This might be good, mm. but not good for me, mm. not good for the future of Egypt. If we number are. four. Number so, four. So, uh, uh, China, 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 of course, but uh, yeah. the very, very big difference, mm. b gap difference, yes. Mm. But yeah, because of 169 out of 13 billion, we would have imagined the ranking would have been much lower than fourth. So we have China first, India, India 
some other country I don't know, but okay. uh, Egypt, number Egypt four. is fourth. But being number four with the total market export of 169, mm. this is might be good for somebody, mm. but not good for Egypt as a whole. Mm. If we consider, are we going to develop? That's one and a half percent almost. I mean, the 169 million out of the 13 billion is almost one and a half percent. Quick math. It, it might, it yeah, might reach, uh, yeah, something more than that. Mm. But still, are we going to develop the herbal plant business mm. in just growing more, mm. exporting more crude with minimum value added? Mm. This might not be good. Mm. Just let us see what is that global market for essential oil. Mm. Essential oil are produced from herbal aromatic herbal plants. Mm. Everybody knows the essential oil of jasmine, where mm. Egypt is exporting almost 50% of the jasmine oil of the world. Mm. We are talking about uh, chamomile, we are talking about fennel, we are about talking about cumin. Mm. But let us look about it in a, by figures. Mm. The herbal, the crude herbal plant business is about 13 billion. Mm. Now, if we are talking about the essential oil, it is 43 billion US dollar. So the, the market is much, much bigger. But the participation of Egypt might be in the area of only 70 million US dollar. Uh -huh. And, uh -huh. and that's, that's uh, less than a half percent. This is very low one. Mm. Mm. And there is another... Yeah, we can see the figures on, uh, on the screen right now. Yeah the, uh, the yes. figures here uh, uh, talking about the market share. Yes. So we, the, you can see it here. Uh, mm. We are talking about the herbal plants, mm. the global and the Egyptian, mm. and the essential oil, and mm. then the herbal extracts. We are mm. talking about herbal extracts mm. that go within the uh, pharmaceutical and the nutraceutical. Mm. You will find the figure much bigger. Mm. Mm. And now uh, we can say one other figure which is very important and very promising for Egypt. We mm. are talking, if we consider the olive leaf extracts, mm. the global market is 700 million. No share for Egypt as a... Zero percent. I can see in the... So if we, are, uh, yes, if we are going to think about how to develop... In the table, I mean. Yeah. Yes, how to develop this herbal plant business, mm. we have to ask ourselves, mm. should we grow and export crude herbal plants with minimum uh, value added mm. or should we go one step ahead mm. in essential oil where we already have mm. a very good reputation, we have a very good uh, competitive edge, mm. should we go for olive leaves extracts if we just remind ourselves again mm. about the total market of olive leaves is 700 million in mm. within uh, and compare it with the total export of crude herbal plants, mm. which is about 169. Right. Then we should consider olive leaf extract is one of the very hot topics that we should consider. Right. Taking into consideration that Egypt is number one in growing olive uh, uh, table olive oils, and we are talking about more than 50 million uh, olive trees in Egypt. Uh, and, and they're mostly situated where? Sinai? And yeah, a lot of... Uh, mm. from... Mm. Olive is a Mediterranean mm. tree, mm. so around the Mediterranean. Around the coast, the Mediterranean uh, coastline. Yes. Yeah. And uh, if you just allow me, I would like to focus on two issues. Mm. The essential oil business and development, yes. what we are doing now with a group of scientists and a group of uh, industry mm -hmm. so we mix the science with industry mm -hmm. how to double the area and the productivity of the essential oil in Egypt and what is our current plans for the olive oils what advantages that we have yes please proceed Dr. Hele so, so I see we, we're doing well in, uh, in uh, the crude uh, um, part of uh, the equation and doing okay in essential oils, less okay in herbal extracts and we're doing nothing in olive leaves extracts. Yes. The, the evaluation of okay or not okay may differ. Of course. And uh, something that I discuss a lot in the National Committee of Drugs, what we should do 
for example, let us say for essential oils, there, must, there are some reasons why we are not that expanding. Mm. First of all, it is cultivated currently in old lands, in mm. Fayou, Beniswif, and Minya, mm. and there is no sustainability of supply. The, some of the lands are not quite good with a number of pesticides in it, and this makes the quality of the product quite inferior. So to, we have another a very big advantage. We have a very b big lands that are desert land. These are virgin land. Mm. Means that they are not infected at all by pesticides. Mm. So we decided to start this way. We, are, we have a plan to cultivate about 10,000 acres of two or three uh, aromatic plants for the purpose of exporting its uh, essential oil. We are famous of our Egyptian chamomile. This is famous worldwide, mm. but we are going to improve the quality of cultivation, the quality of collection, the quality of uh, drying, all of these factors that when it is not done properly in the old land, make it inferior quality. So. We have the plan now to focus on three aromatic plants to reach these 10,000 acres. And what we believe is the magnetic effect or the spiral effect. The magnetic effect, when people see a successful story, they are going to repeat it the same way. But not to repeat it in the old land with the, with the disadvantage of it. So one of the plants to increase the essential oil export in these three items, the chamomile, the cumin. You may wonder that the Egyptian essential oil of cumin is number one in the world. Mm -hmm. So we have We to hear a lot about it, yeah. Yes. So can, can you tell us some of its major uh, benefits? It is cumin, mm. the, mm. used in the food in mm. a very big amount, in the mm. flavoring. Yeah. And uh, what this I mean is... health benefits, th that's what I meant. I mean, surely it, it has is some, some health... I wouldn't say yeah. that it has a mm. very... It is used mm. in uh, food for the purpose of... Uh, Giving it... Uh, the uh, flavor, the taste, and something like that. The same like for chamomile. Chamomile goes in a, a very big number of mm. pharmaceutical products, uh, uh, cosmetics, and the market is very, very big. So if we are talking about a total market of 69 million of essential oils, we hope after this 10,000 acres we cultivated, there will be a new trend to increase this 10,000 acres to be 100,000 acres. Mm. This will make a shift in the... Uh, and, and, and where are the 10,000 acres It is in Minya. Minya, the desert of Minya, in cooperation. One of the biggest provinces in Egypt. Is yes, it? but we selected in cooperation with a, a huge uh, company, cultivation company. They already have their infrastructure, but they need the scientific support. They need the know-how of uh, cultivation, collection, mm -hmm. steam distillation. So the cooperation between science, academia, and, uh, yeah. and uh, industry and agriculture will give a result. Could you tell us, uh, Dr. Hillel, uh, uh, what we are seeing on the on the screen now? The, uh, the, the yes, the, yeah, the yes. video and, yes. and, and guide us through. Yes. Mm. To have a competition in the international market, we should think who are we competing with. We can compete with Europe, but we can hardly compete with India and China. And India and China, luckily, don't grow olive. So this is a very big advantage. So the 700 million US dollar market is for uh, olive leaves extract business done in Europe. So are we going to have the olive leaves when there is a pruning of the olive trees? This might not be good. So during the last three years, this is a long story, by the way. Mm. The three years. And we want to listen yes. to it. Uh, the herbal extracts depend a lot on the active constituent in it. 
for example, to give you an example, you may have a jasmine oil that is very nice, a jasmine oil that is not nice at all. You can have olive leaf extract that is full of the active ingredients needed or the active ingredient which is called oleorubin. Why all olive oil is good for health? It is good for it has oleorubin active ing ingredient. So when we are thinking of real business of olive leaf extracts, we have to consider which variety of olive trees that are giving us the best amount of uh, olive rubin. So we have three factors here. Are we growing olive for our project, for the oil ol olive tab uh, table uh, olives, or for the trees itself? This is very important decision, and we decided we are going to grow olive trees for the purpose of leaves only. Now, which variety we are going to grow? which variety will give us the maximum amount of oil European and which geographical place that we are going to grow. Active material generally differ according to the habitat around the plant. I don't want to go to very deep in pharmacy, but let us understand that. For example, Please. if we grow olive for uh, the fruits itself, or the oil, it will be very nice when it is around the Mediterranean Sea. But if we go to Aswan, for example, the tree will grow, but no olives tree. But now we are growing olive for the purpose of the leaves and active material. So we make uh, a group of scientists and researchers, and the two PhD are running now, to evaluate the following. In the, our previous uh, studies, we know which seven varieties are doing the, giving us the best uh, olive ruby. So we select three of them, and we cultivated it in different six geographical location, in El Tor, in Rasted, and I'll come back again for yeah. this in Sinai, Sinai especially. Sinai, yes. And in Minya and in Giza and in Aswan. Upper Egypt. Uh, yes, yeah. and it is cultivated in a short uh, distances between them and we are not going to allow to the tree to grow that much. It, it, it is in our plan to have the Egyptian olive trees like tree, tea tree. Mm. We are going to have a unique or Egyptian olive leaf extract. And why I'm saying unique? For we have a very big competitive edge that is not present in any place of the world. Which is? Which is in Sinai. Why Sinai? Suppose that the half of the population are Christians and uh, Muslims of the world, and everybody of them knows the holy spot in Sinai. So we are going to grow the holy or the blessed tree in the blessed area of Sinai, with the purpose of having special olive leaf extract, or I would like to say it, Egyptian olive leaf extracts, with uh, its competitive edge, and it will be done in cooperation between science and industry and the cult agriculture. So we, the video that uh, we see, we saw it. It is done in cooperation with the agriculture research center, and there are two PhDs that are studying the uh, development of these products, mm. and uh, we will have it in ice, and hopefully we can have 50% of the market share of the olive leaf extract, and this is not that far, for as I told you before, we already have 50 million olive trees. Mm. So if we... So, so the target is to have 50% of the global share. This is our... And, uh, it is not that something far. Something like 350 million. Uh, yes, the, yeah. it is not that far. Mm. It is not that far. Mm. The advantage will mm. be in proper cultivation, with proper uh, variety mm. and to have it a sustainable way mm. free from insecticide and hopefully from cyanide. Hopefully. And that would get our global share to something like 4 or 5% because you would uh, be no. tripling the 169 plus 350. That's the target. Almost, almost 4 or 5% no, no. of the 13 billion, the total, the total in no, uh, herbal no, plants. No, business. let me, uh, mm. the, the figure that you mentioned, the 169 mm. is for the 
raw material. Right, right. I'm I not understand. going to export raw material at all. Yes, no, yes. this is... Uh, no, no, I, I understand. But, but you, you told us that the whole industry in the world, the herbal plants industry is... The crude one, uh, the crude is 13 billion. Okay. The essential oil is 45 billion. Mm. The extract general mm. is 100 and something billion. Uh -huh. Aha. Oh, yeah, because I didn't see this on the table. That's yes. why I didn't know. Either. And the olive leaf extract only 700 million. Mm. So if we, it is in our plan, this is very ambitious. And as I told you, this is, will depend on the magnetic effect when the others see what we are doing. Hopefully within five or to 10 years, we will have 10% of the market share which is evaluated as about 6 billion US dollars. Very close to the income from Suez Canal. Yeah, um, that's, a, that's a very, um, uh, um, uh, a tr I mean, a very ambitious uh, uh, goal. Uh, and uh, we really wish, of course, uh, uh, we'll uh, success uh, for uh, this, gr uh, this uh, plan. And, and it will definitely bring a lot of uh, uh, money to Egypt and uh, wish you success really in, in this regard. You talked more than once Dr. Hillel uh, about the cooperation between academia and the uh, business community. I mean historically there is a lot of friction between academia and, uh, and business community. Yeah, exactly. So right. how are you, uh, I tell you, you know, coping here? Yeah. How are we coping here in Egypt? This is a problem in Egypt and worldwide mm. but let me f phrase it as follows, that academic are proud of their talent and the industry caring about their wallet. So they are talking differently. The academic and they are truly mm. right and proud of what they are doing research and mm. they have in the PhD and uh, mm. one day I was from them and I still doing business and the research with them. I published about 25 papers in one direction for rice bran for something about Alzheimer. But when I'm going to cooperate with academic, I clearly define as an industry what I really want from them. We have the academic usually have his own dream and it is good to have dream, but the industry should identify exactly what he needs from the academic. And we have to say that uh, I, uh, I was lucky to have a number of funds to allow for the payment for the research development from the Academy of Science, from EU funds, from the STDF, the Egyptian uh, support. But to answer your question, being myself academic before, so I know how to talk to my colleagues, to the, my professors, and being a little bit in the business, I understand what is really needed to develop a business. Exactly like I so, so um, yeah, I mean, so, so someone like you uh, would be an excellent bridge between, as you put it, those who care for their talent and those who care for their wallets. So you are the bridge between talent and wallet. Hopefully, uh, at, I, I succeed a moment. little bit in that, and uh, I cooperated with the Faculty of Pharmacy and the Agricultural Research Center and the Natural Research Center in a number of projects. And some of them we have a patent product and some of them still developing. And uh, we are doing nice. Well, what are the obstacles, Dr. Hillel, that uh, you are facing that might derail or delay or slow the, the process of your very ambitious target? If you are going to say it very frankly, the system that govern, that govern the academic in developing their products doesn't, don't allow them to do it properly. I wouldn't say that it is uh, a bad one, but the general situation for to do a research, when somebody is doing a research, he will need material A or B or C. He should have it two days, three days, but not to be waiting for three or six months for this material to come. This is one of the administrative uh, mm. property. The second thing, the way of promotion of the professors or the PhD, he should do a number of publications. 
but he may do publication in one direction and next year he's doing publication in another, in another, in another. Then the total he has a number of publications, but nothing was developed a real one. What I discussed before with uh, academy and with uh, professors in faculty of pharmacy Very and other important point. Mm -hmm. to have a focused research, mm -hmm. the group of scientists to develop a, uh, if something that might explain why sometimes I feel pity. Let me ask myself and the audience and anybody how many drugs are developed, are really developed by the pharmaceutical community, you will find it a very humble one. Mm. Locally, of course, yeah. Mm. yeah. And why not to be a global one? Mm. Why not? Mm. Mm. We are, in my previous conversation with your kind self, I told you that we are exporting almost 50% of jasmine fragrance. Then give me why, one reason why we don't have international cologne or perfume based on it is not that difficult yeah and it would be easy to market it i mean it comes from from egypt the land of civilization after all the land of the, it the needs, pharaohs it needs a right. focus mm -hmm. focus on let us focus on mm -hmm. how to have international mm -hmm. brand mm -hmm. for egyptian jasmine mm -hmm. and without mentioning the name of the companies that I'm going to talk about, mm. there is a company in Italy producing chocolate. Mm. Chocolate is not produced in Italy, of course, mm. but they are producing mm. a market of about 11 billion US dollars just for chocolate. Mm. Mm. We can do this. So you're looking for that pharaonic perfume. Uh -huh. It can, we it can do that. easy to market. Can be done. Modernate. Can yeah. be done. Why, yeah. why not be mm -hmm. Nefertari jasmine? What, yeah, why yeah. not be Cleopatra yeah. jasmine? Something yeah. like that. Mm. Even if we are going to uh, cooperate with a French perfumery to do it for ourselves in Egypt, and by time the Egyptian scientists will know how to develop a number of perfumes. We are talking about. Lavender, we are talking about jasmine, we are talking about this and yeah. like that. This is a way we can develop more if we are talking about the value added. Mm -hmm. Then to have a crude drug, this is something. Mm -hmm. To have the essential oils better, much better. Mm -hmm. To have the product, finished product, this is the optimum. I, I really, I, I mean, we have to commend your efforts and, uh, um, and we like your ideas, really. I mean, very fantastic ideas. And surely we will, we will have more discussions about this fascinating and interesting world of uh, herbal plants and the many, many opportunities that uh, uh, we thank here you. in Egypt might have in this field. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Amr Hilal, uh, the former uh, staff member of the Faculty of Pharmacy, Cairo University, and a member of the uh, National Drug Committee. A pleasure having you with us. Pleasure, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Dear viewers, for watching Business Insider, please stay with Nile TV.